Hey guys, I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day and use this opportunity to talk to you about the origins of the holiday. The original Mother's Day proclamation was written by Julia Ward Howe, who also wrote the Battle Hymn of the Republic, and she was a major abolitionist and women's suffrage. And this is how the whole thing started. Women who had lost sons fighting in the Civil War for the North got together with women who had lost sons dying in the Civil War for the South. And they decided that mothers should come together and declare a peace day. They said, and wow, is this meaningful today, that the great questions of war and peace should not be decided by what they called irrelevant agencies. And so later, this was in 1870, Mother's Day actually became a national holiday when President Woodrow Wilson in 1907 turned it into a day that he called public expression of our love and reverence for all mothers. But that's not the way it started. And so you can see how it became, how it devolved into this consumer holiday where at least when we're not in quarantine, we take our mothers to lunch and we buy flowers for our mothers, something much grittier and more fierce was intended. And so I want to take this opportunity to read to you, you can see it on the internet, of course, the original Mother's Day proclamation written by Julia Ward Howe in 1870. <clears throat> Arise, all women who have hearts, whether your baptism be that of water or of tears, say firmly, we will not have great questions decided by irrelevant agencies. Our husbands shall not come to us reeking with carnage for caresses and applause. Our sons shall not be taken from us to unlearn all that we have been able to teach them of charity, mercy, and patience. We, women of one country, will be too tender of those of another country to allow our sons to be trained to injure theirs. From the bosom of the devastated earth, a voice goes up with our own. It says, disarm, disarm. The sword is not the balance of justice. Blood does not wipe out dishonor, nor violence indicate possession. As men has of, have often forsaken the plow and the anvil at the summons of war, let women now leave all that may be left of home for a great and earnest day of counsel. Let them meet first as women to bewail and commemorate the dead. Let them then solemnly take counsel with each other as to the means whereby the great human family can live in peace, each learning after his own time the sacred impress, not of Caesar, but of God. In the name of womanhood and of humanity, I earnestly ask that a general Congress of women without limit of nationality may be appointed and held at some place deemed most convenient and at the earliest period consistent with its objects to promote the alliance of the different nationalities, the amicable settlement of international questions, the great and general interests of peace." Unquote. I think we should resurrect the original meaning of Mother's Day. And I want to remember particularly today, women who have lost their children, and particularly women who have lost their children in war. I have seen efforts, international efforts, um, Palestinian and Israeli women and others, where women from two sides of a conflict will come together in the names of their fallen children and seek to find a peace that lies apparently beyond the ability of what Julia Ward Howe called ultimately irrelevant agencies. In every advanced species that survives and thrives, a common characteristic is the fierce behavior of the adult female of that species when she senses a threat to her cubs. You see this with the mama tiger and bear. You see this with the lion. And yet, on this planet, we have one billion people living on a dollar and 25 cents and less a day. 
That includes tens of thousands who starve, including 12,000 children who starve every day. Here in this country, we have, even before the pandemic, 13 million children who went to school hungry every day. We have millions of American children who go to school in classrooms that don't even have the adequate school supplies with which to teach a child to read. And if a child cannot learn to read by the age of eight, the chances of high school graduation is drastically decreased and the chances of incarceration is drastically increased. That's why they call it the cradle to prison pipeline. Where are we? Why, why is this happening? You know, I remember we all know the line from the Dalai Lama that if civilization is to make it, it will be because of an uprising of the American woman. Well, I always was a little uncomfortable by the fact that any man, even one as holy as that one, had to verify this. When do we expect this to happen? What is this later date? And I think that one of the things that the pandemic is showing us is we don't have time to wait. You know, mother, to me, is a place in the human psyche. It's not just women who have given birth. It's not just women who are adoptive mothers. It's not just women. And today, with the fluidity of sex and sexuality, it's an aspect of consciousness. And we must now mother a new world. I think it's time for all of us to claim the, the aspect of divine mother inside us. There's masculine and feminine in all of us. And there's divine father as well as divine mother to, to embody within all of us. And it is time for us to conceive a new world and to be pregnant with a new world and to labor to give birth to a new world because the world we are living in is not survivable long-term. It is not sustainable for life in the 21st century. If what we're going through now with this pandemic doesn't show all of us that, I don't know what can. You know, we've been skating on very thin ice, not just related to infectious diseases, also related to, uh, to nuclear power and also related to, uh, to weather catastrophes. So it is time for all of us to choose to be mothers, all of us, fierce mothers. Anna Jarvis, who was the daughter of Julia Ward Howe, was devastated at the devolution of the holiday, seeing it become something mindless rather than mindful, as we would say today. We're all pregnant now with something new, and that's a good thing. You know, young women, and we need young men and young women. You know, if the planet is to, if the human race is to continue, it has to procreate. So, of course, we need, you know, young men and young women to do what they do in order to give birth to babies. But no matter how old we are, and no matter what sex we are, no matter what sexuality we are, our consciousness is the womb out of which we'll be reborn. A new humanity. So all of us are important if this thing is to continue. Yes, we need babies, but those babies won't survive if we don't also have some wisdom. So let this day, let Mother's Day be a day where we don't just celebrate, we commit and we don't just celebrate mothers. We celebrate the wisdom of the mother who is within us all. Thank you. Have a beautiful day.